At the first board meeting of 2017, the Reserve Governor Lowe and the board met and they've kept interest rates on hold. Now it's been a while since we last caught up, you know, we, we last met in December. So there's been a lot of data that I wanted to share with you and talk through and a lot of developments that have been happening in the housing market. So to start with, I want to focus in on employment. So we did see at the December, at the end of December, we could actually have a look at the annual rate of employment growth. Now we saw the annual percentage change from 5.7% to 5.8%, which meant that basically unemployment had risen. Now why is there a cause for that? Well, what normally happens is during university finishes in November, people start applying for new jobs. So that puts a little bit of a spike around that. But what has been interesting, in 2015, we created 297,000 new jobs. Now this year, in the end of 2016, sorry, we only created another 91,000 new jobs. So that's obviously going to be quite concerning. In addition to that, we're seeing still some trends around full-time work versus part-time work or casual work. So it's also going to be challenging. We obviously want to see more people in full-time employment, and that's what the RBA talks about in terms of spare capacity. So is everyone working to their capacity? And at the moment, that's definitely not the case. And that's also the reason why we haven't seen any wage growth or wage breakouts. And that's also factoring in terms of when you look at the, the overall economy, the inflation level is actually quite low because the economy is still spluttering along there. It's not sort of hitting its straps yet. So that's why we're seeing inflation low. Now, the Reserve Governor and the Board are thinking, all right, well, that's something we need to look at. And, and a lot of the commentators are saying for this year, if we see really, really low inflation, that could force the Governor and the Board to actually drop interest rates lower. Now, my opinion is they're going to be trying to counterbalance that with the property market. Now, the problem we have right now with the property market is prices are still going harder. And the other big problem we have is there's too many investors looking to jump into the property market. Now, obviously, we're a property investment business, and so we absolutely want to see people making smart decisions about buying in the right locations at the right time. And we've definitely seen you know, conversations of late around housing affordability. This is a political dynamite. This is dangerous territory. So what I want to talk to you about is check out our podcast, The Property Couch. I'm going to be talking a lot more about affordability on the next podcast, which comes out on Thursday afternoon. Now, the challenge we have here is afford the affordability story isn't around Australia, it's really just centred in on Sydney, to be honest. Um, even Melbourne has decent affordability in some areas. It's just the uh, understanding that people are looking for around, I want to buy in a city and I want to basically see inner city properties to be more affordable. But we've got to be realistic about that. The reality is that in other nations right around the world, in the big capital financial hubs of those countries, housing affordability is also challenging. And they don't have things like negative gearing. They don't have those types of challenges, yet we do see human interest and human behavior, people wanting to live close to all the amenities and all the different things that are available to them, and they'll pay a premium for that. So I haven't seen any government on the planet solve the affordability crisis en masse. There are some opportunities to solve that around better infrastructure, uh, fast, fast train transports to different potential nodes, uh, building sub city centres in, in different parts of big capital cities. So there are a few things I'll be talking about on the podcast, so check that out. Some of the other data that's been coming through in January was the, um, the data on retail sales. So annually, we're looking at retail sales up around 3.2% but it was only slightly up in December. So it also says to us that there is still some confidence in the marketplace, uh, which is a good sign for the further 2017 future. But what is important to understand is we also got another kick up from the trade surplus as well. So we had a, an amazing trade surplus of around $3.5 billion. Now that's, you know, we need to go back to 2009 for those sort of numbers, incredible numbers. And that's the result of two things. We're shipping a lot more volume of iron ore and coal into our trading partners, but also the rebound in prices from the historical lows that we saw in early 2016. So that's a good news story for government, hopefully a bit of revenue coming through. But you know, then we've got to look at the Trump story. 
that's going on at the moment in regards to world trade. Now, if we did see Trump continuing on his little agenda um, and starting to look uh, and pick on areas like uh, Asia and particularly China around the amount of imports they're receiving, that will have a kick on effect to Australia. You know, we will see less iron ore and less coal being needed as potentially the Chinese economy slows. So again, we're, we're evenly balanced. I do believe that interest rates will remain on hold for the remainder of the year, currently looking at the environment. There is arguments for potentially lower interest rates around inflation, so keep your eyes on that. But the other thing we also need to see is exactly how world trade starts to take shape. And if we're going to go to a protectionism type environment, um, such as the Brexit and also what's happening in the US, well then the reality is that's, that's recessionary. That is dangerous for all nations because you know Australia, just to give you an idea, we, we export you know, 50% of the wine that we produce. We, you know, we basically export two thirds of all the, the uh, natural wheat and, and all of our food production is exported. So you know, we're a nation that relies on those types of jobs. Coming back to the construction side of things, you know, if I round this out and I look at the construction story, you know, if we're going to see a slowing of um, medium and high density accommodation, that's also going to in, in, infect uh, construction jobs and those types of things as well. So it's delicately poised and that's why I think interest rates will remain on hold for 2017.